and I'm looking at you And you're looking at me I can feel something Oh, what can it be? The Ban Bacha Bride journey is all about love And what is love without a little excitement? A little romance on that note, Team BBB is all set to welcome our next Ban Baja Bride Jodi with a very special and of course a very romantic surprise. My Ban Baja Bride journey started and they take us out of Mumbai and we don't know where we're going. I've never seen Ban Baja Bride shooting in jungle man. But I'm sure it's full of surprises ahead. There's one snake right there. <laughs> Don't do that. I was completely surprised thinking that why would BBB shoot in a forest? And that's when we saw a trail. This one, I'm looking better than you. Check this one. <laughs> I was completely amazed at what I see. I really did not expect that they would actually capture all of the pictures that I had sent them and put it across on trees. It's like all old memories coming back. First trip to Goa? Yeah, this was like some two years back. It felt like we were reliving our good old days, our dating days, which we had missed for a very long time and that was finally coming back. Sophia Pathan, I'm 27 years old. I'm from Gujarat. I'm a very fun loving, chirpy, and an honest person. I'm getting married to Munir Khan, and we've been dating since the last seven years. My name is Munir Iqbal, and I'm basically from Gwalior. At the moment, I'm working for a software company in Pune. I'm a fun loving guy. And I'm very excited to be on Band Baja Bright. For the longest of time, Munir and I had missed out on a lot of romance and fun. And this was like the perfect setting. Where we are totally relaxed and just being ourselves and spending that quality time with each other. I first met Munir for a company that we were working for. We were in the same training batch and he used to coach me and eventually he asked me out on a date and I agreed to go out with him. I borrowed a bike, a Thunderbird, to impress her. So that was our first bike ride. We went to see the hills in Lonavla. If you're lost, you can I realized that we were in love when we had become totally inseparable. I couldn't spend a day apart from him. I just knew that he was the one that I wanted to spend my life with. And we got engaged in the year 2010. Usually in Banbaja Bride, the focus has always been on the bride and her entire makeover journey. But I'm so glad that this season Munir is experiencing the same journey along with me because deep down in my heart I really feel that he truly deserves all the kind of pampering that he would be receiving. And why not? Because Munir is my bundle of joy. Munir is the reason why I smile so much. Munir is the reason why I would wear makeup and get all dressed up. Munir is my pillar of strength. And Munir is the reason why I survived cancer. You know, Frisha, I was just thinking about our new couple, Sophia and Munir. 
and I think they're incredible, aren't they? I've seen so many episodes of Ban Baja Bride, and I, at least according to me, I haven't seen a couple where the guy is so rock solid and the girl is so strong. And when you meet Sofia, she comes across as this very soft, vulnerable, shy person, but she really is a fighter. Absolutely, and you know what? This show is not really about pretty clothes and makeovers. It's a show which has become iconic because all the brides in the country and women in general identify with these brides because they're such special people. And there they are, our star couple. How are Hi. you? Hello. <laughs> Hi. 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 Pleasure to have you on the show. Same here. Same here. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Wonderful Hi. meeting you finally. Thank Thank you. Sit down. Welcome. How are you feeling? Feeling great. I can't believe that I am here. I mean, I never thought I would get selected and be on the show. I still remember, you know, we were sitting with friends watching the show and, you know, she used to, you know, tell me that I want to be on the show. I want, you know, all this. I also want all the makeovers. So, <laughs> you know, we need to learn from you guys because you've gone through so much in the last one and a half years. But when I look at both of you, you're just such a normal couple. Uh, yeah, Sabir, the last one and a half year has been like I can say the worst time that we've ever had, both of us. It started with 2013, you know, when I was first diagnosed for my uh, kidney stone. After that, you know, she had a little lump in her neck. That's when we came to know that there is this uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Around uh, April, May 2013, I developed a swelling in my neck and I went for a regular checkup to the doctor to check what it exactly was. The diagnosis said that I had thyroid cancer. I was completely shocked because I had never expected something like this to happen to me at such a young age. But tell me something, when you first learned that you have cancer, what was going on inside your head? Did you break down? Uh, yeah, I did. Just the word cancer is like big enough to break down anyone. And what was going on inside your head? When I first came to know uh, about her illness, there were a lot of things going in my mind that why, you know, why her, why it is happening all of a sudden when we are about to get married. But then my parents, you know, they told me that we are a family and we have to fight this as a family. So that's when I started supporting her a lot. We made it a point that, you know, we'll make it look like that. So what? It's something Anyone, very minor. Very like minor. It's I mean, so what? Anyone can have it. I mean, you don't choose to, you know, be there. You don't choose to be, you know, ill. And we always had a very strong faith in Allah. And uh, we always, uh, we always knew that we will sail through it. It's about this particular time which we are in right now. But in the end, everything is going to be fine. Talking about Munir, I can say I fall short of words to even describe the amount of support that I have received from him. Because he has seen me through my illness, he has stood by me through my worst time, he has seen me in the hospital like very sick, extremely sick with scars on my neck. In good times everyone supports you but it's in your bad times when you actually know who is there for you. So he's been there with me in my bad times so that has made us a stronger couple today. And time has really tested the two of you, hasn't it? Because yes. this isn't the first time that you set a date for your wedding. That's, that's true. Well, we were supposed to get married in December. After my thyroid cancer, after I got operated, in November 2013, my father-in-law passed away and then my wedding, which was supposed to happen in December, again got delayed. Did you all, at some point of time, think that all of these three things coming together, her cancer, your stone, your father passing away, did you all think that, you know, something's really going wrong and I think that maybe we are not meant to be? She thought that, you know, ek ke baad ek cheeze hoti ja rahi hai aur humari shadi push hoti ja rahi hai. Uh, so, but again I told her that it is for good, maybe there is something 
better for us in the destiny and uh, so we just have to you know hold on and she told me that we will organize a very small function wherein we will not do a big wedding but then again uh, it was my father's dream to you know to see our wedding I still remember he used to tell my mom also that ye mera ladla beta hai iski shaadi main chahta hu ki sabse achhi tarah ho aur sabse grand wedding ho and uh, he loved uh, her also a lot and he wanted to you know see sofia as a bride you know i really regret the fact that i couldn't meet your father because of the fact that you see that when somebody gets diagnosed with cancer normally from somebody from the other side would say is ladki se shaadi mat karna because you never know what your future might be yeah. but it's your father yes who actually you pushed also. you to say ki isi se shaadi karo yes so i think you guys are blessed and you said that your father wanted you to have a very grand wedding yes well we are at the right place at the right time and we will stay committed to the fact that we'll give you a great and a grand makeover and of course we'll have a grand wedding you know they went through so much in their lives but their relationship got only stronger and stronger and i think that is the testimonial to how deep their love was in band baja bride we do not just celebrate beautiful makeovers we celebrate lovely love stories and today's love story is a love story forever okay so should we get on to it i know that this is our jodi special but this doesn't mean that you do everything together as a couple after all we want to keep the excitement going So I'm going to kidnap your fiance for a little while and I'm going to put you in the safe and capable hands of Sabia Sachi and we're going to choose your lehenga. Shall we? Yes, yes please. Let's go. Trisha took me to the men section of Sabia Sachi's store. What a collection of Sherwanis. So many options to go for. <laughs> I was thoroughly confused. अगर मेरे पास होता तो मैं कम से कम दस शेरवानिया वहां से उठा पाता Then Trisha helped me to pick the best Sherwani for me. जब मैं फ्रीशिया के साथ अपनी शेरवानी पसंद कर रहा था अपने लिए तो बहुत सारे ऑप्शन देख रहा था पर कहीं ना कहीं मेरे दिल में और दिमाग में ये था कि सोफिया क्या पहनेगी वॉट सब्य साची इज प्लानिंग फॉर सोफिया सोफिया वी हैव कम टू द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ दिस मेक ओवर जर्नी योर ब्राइडल लहंगा सो वॉट कैन ऑफ लहंगा वो यू वॉन्ट टू वेयर आई हैड फूशिया पिंग ऑन माई माइंड ओके वाई फूशिया Because it is one of my favorite colors, and I like bright colors a lot. You know, I like fuchsia. Yeah, it's a very good color. But you know, I have a little bit of a dilemma. And you are a very unusual bride. So why don't I just pay a tribute to your story and make something very, very unusual with a strong color? How about a green? What exact shade in green? Ah, uh, emerald. Emerald green. Would you go for it? Yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to lead you on to a small secret. Your lehenga is with us. Are you saying it's ready? Is it already yes, ready? Of course, it's ready. You know, I do my homework very well, and you go into your changing room, and someone very special will help you change into your bridal lehenga. Okay. Ah, uh, but one second. I don't think you need this anymore. There's nothing to hide, honestly. Let me take this. Go enjoy your journey. You know, Sophia always wore a scarf around her neck because she was embarrassed about the scars on her neck. Surgery scars. But why should she be? Because there's nothing to hide. She should not be ashamed of the fact that she had cancer. It's a thing of the past. Right now she's going to get into celebration mode, move on with her wedding journey, and I think cancer should just rest. Sabia sa? Hi Shagupta. Come on in. Yes, you're right. So, how do you feel? 
I love it. It's beautiful. When I wore my lehenga for the first time, I felt amazing. I felt I was looking like a Mughal princess. And that I've never looked this beautiful ever before. You don't want to wear a fuchsia pink? Not anymore. Well, thank God for that. And what do you think about the new surprise that I told you? Well, of course I know her. She's Shagufta, one of your brides from the last season. It was a nice surprise to meet Shagufta. And uh, it was nice to know that she was working with Sabdesachi. I mean, life changes so much after Ban Baja Bride. But anyway, we have a lot of work to finish, jobs to be done. So why don't you come over and sit with us for some bridal jewelry consultancy? Come in. I was all ready in my lehenga and all set to pick my jewelry. Sophia, let me introduce you to a very, very important person. Pratiksha, she's from Krishnadas and Company, a very, very reputed jewelry house from Hyderabad. So would you care to throw light on what you have specially created for her? Sophia, you in particular, he has told us that you're a Muslim bride. Yeah. And knowing Sabya and his love for heritage and authenticity, we didn't want to do anything fusion. So we've decided that we are going to go for a total heritage, traditional Muslim look for you. Sabya and Pratiksha had hand-picked my jewellery and it was typical traditional Muslim jewellery which would go perfectly with my Mughal princess look. I think Pratiksha, it's time that we put on some of the jewellery. Yeah, sure. I'm sure she'll look lovely. So the first piece that we are going to give you is a lachha, which is a very traditional Hyderabadi choker, which is made of uncut diamonds and rose cuts and pearls and emeralds. When I wore the first piece, I felt amazed. Just looking at the stones in it, it looked so wow. And the second piece which we'll be layering with it is a charm necklace which has emeralds which are carved and, and with basra pearls. And you know, beneath it, you wear a satlara which is done with rows and rows of basra pearls, perfectly graded, with Zambian emeralds, with uncut diamonds, and for a Muslim wedding to be complete, you need two beautiful accessories. You first need a stunning tikka. Now this one is done with the most beautiful quality of syndicate polkis and pearls. Let's see what it looks like. With a row of basra on top? Yes. I think it's gorgeous. And of course, a very, very beautiful traditional pasa. I think it's very exotic. And not to forget the nuts, Sabya. Of course, the nut. I think all Indian weddings, whether Muslim or Hindu, looks beautiful with a traditional nut. So having said all of that, I have to tell you something. We'll do the customization this time to the tea. She's going to go to Lad Bazaar, which is famous for churis in Hyderabad. And matching all your swatches, she's going to fill up your hand with beautiful shisha bangles. And maybe she can source a beautiful hatful for you. That's going to complete the bridal look. Wow. Yes. When I wore my wedding jewellery, I could already imagine myself as a bride and I couldn't wait for the day to wear all of it together. Now that Sophia's lehenga is sorted out and it's a beautiful emerald green lehenga with a lot of precious and semi-precious stones in it and we have beautiful jewellery from Kishan Das and Company, it's time to discover her look. Sophia's look, we think, should be called the Mughal Princess and I'll tell the team at Lakme to interpret the look with beautiful smoky eyes, with a little accent of gold, pale pink lips, cheeks, and also with that center parted hair so that we can put that dazzling beautiful mantika with a pasa. And I think Sophia is going to look absolutely stunning. Now that the bridal look is decided, it's time for us to shower the bride with other gifts. Sophia and Munir's BBB journey has already started on a high with their surprise getaway from us. The brave Jodi has already gotten a glimpse of their wedding attire and jewellery, all chosen by Sabya Sachi personally. Now it's time to start the makeover journey. Let's see what can be done about Sophia's concerning surgery scar. But first, a box full of happiness awaits our lovely bride.
When I'm looking at you And you're looking at me